lot in sports. Jimmy Johnson has tied two of the immortals in our sport. How will you be remembered on track, on the court, or on the field? But a legacy is defined by much more than what you've done. It's also what you leave behind, the path you'll pave for your family. And for me, that's my two daughters, Genevieve and Lydia, my girls. Being a professional athlete in a male-dominated sport, you always get the question, who's gonna follow in your footsteps? But the honest answer is, if my girls wanna become race car drivers, I say go for it. I'm proud of them and love them more than anything in the world. And I encourage them to be whatever they want to be. No matter what their dreams, I'll be proud and support them unconditionally because I love them. I love being a girl dad, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm honored to call Evie and Lydia my daughters and both their unique little personalities in their own ways. So wave that green flag, girls, like I know you can. Dad will be watching from his car, full of pride and probably a few goosebumps. Oh, my heart. That makes my heart happy right there. We are just a few minutes away from Green Flag. Welcome to Race Day, presented by Coca-Cola Energy. And just a few minutes ago, Jimmy Johnson was introduced out at California. Take a listen to this. He comes to us from El Cajon, California, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy is also accompanied by today's honorary starters, his wife Chandra, daughters Evie and Lydia Johnson, and his pit crew. So special, his family will wave the flag. He is on the front row starting second. Let's go down to get command to start engines. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome executive producer and star of CBS's SEAL team, actor David Boreanis. Okay, race fans. On, behind, on behalf of our great men and women of the military community, our special operators and SEAL team, drivers, start your engines! Who doesn't love a big Hollywood blockbuster? Stars, special effects, lots of action. After two races, this NASCAR Cup season has lived up to its billing. While familiar leading men have found the spotlights in Victory Lane, supporting cast has kept fans on the edge of their seats. So while A-listers like Harvick, Bush, Truex, Elliott are still searching for their matinee idol mojo, we enjoy scene-stealing performances from DiBenedetto, Stenhouse, Wallen, Dillon, so far, they've proven they're ready for their close-ups. And welcome to Southern California. I'd say sunny because it was here an hour ago. Let's just go with that. <laughs> they've run 30 cup races at this track. Half of them have been won by seven drivers in the field, and my partner has another three. I'm Mike Joy with Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon. What is it the drivers so love about racing on this two-mile speedway? Yeah, Mike, this is one of my favorite race, race tracks. I think all the drivers will agree. Let's break down this two-mile Auto Club speedway, starting with 11 degrees of front straightaway, where these cars will be barreling into turn one at over 190 miles per hour, to a very flat 14-degree sweeping long turns one and two. But talking about flat, this track is very flat with that three degree back straight away but in turns three and four look at this Mike 70 feet wide you could put 12 cars side by side out there and trust me with a lack of grip at this track and as wide as it is they're going to be using every foot of that from the wall even on the apron 
Yeah, four wide's commonplace. They'll go five wide on the pace lap here in just a moment. Does this track suit any particular style of driver? Well, we talk about some dirt track racers like Kyle Larson, uh, Tyler Reddick, maybe Christopher Bell. These guys love to slide that car around, and that's what they're going to be doing a lot of here today. They're going to be slipping and sliding, looking for grip. I think a driver that's very smooth with the throttle, but also very aggressive on restarts is going to be a driver that comes out on top today. Should certainly be fun to watch. We had a little sprinkle during pre-race, but a stiff wind upwards of 25 miles an hour has blown that rain away and blown the track dry. We're ready to race in Southern California on Fox. People come here to make it. Bad Brad. Jimmy Johnson. They desire this lifestyle. Martin Truex Jr. This beauty. The California kid. This fame. Kyle Busch. Hit his magic number 200. Life moves fast in this town. And you can get chewed up and spit out quickly. Everyone wants the same thing. To have that success and stardom who'll be the star today. The rain has stopped, the track is dry. The ceiling is lifting because even Mother Nature wants to see the Auto Club 400 get underway here at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. Well, it's been a beautiful week here in SoCal. As you can see from our Fox Weather app, Friday, 84 degrees, full sun. Yesterday, partly cloudy. And today, about an hour ago, the temperature plummeted uh, it, within about five minutes down to the mid 50s. We had a brief sprinkle, but now we're ready to race. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Clint Boyer will start from the pole. He won the pole by less than about two feet and Jimmy Johnson by seven one thousandths of a second. We'll start on the front row second. His teammate Alex Bowman won practice and Kurt Busch, the 2003 winner in row two. Row three, the 2011 winner, Kevin Harvick and Eric Almarola, ninth year last March. Joey Logano, five straight top tens here, second last year. And Michael McDowell with a great start. He'll go off eight. And filling the top 10, Kyle Larson, the 2017 winner, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who's already led 54 laps this season.
They're uh, going to have a special five wide tribute here to Jimmy Johnson and realign the cars. But before that, I think we need to dial up old seven sure. time. JJ, this is Jeff and Mike up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me, buddy? Yeah, I am not clear. Now listen, I'm not trying to get you emotional or choked up, but my gosh, all you've accomplished since that first win here in Auto Club 2002, that crowd reaction today was unbelievable. You got family, friends, and your girls are up in the flag stand ready to wave the green flag. I got to imagine that it's starting to sink in a little bit that this is your final season. Man, it really is, and I'm, my heart's full. I'm, I'm so thankful for what the track has done and friends and family here in the area. This is a, uh, a special weekend. And Oh, it's uh, made things even more special how fast this Ally Chevy is. So I'm uh, ready to get to work and uh, can't wait to see what today brings. All right, well, they're letting me, uh, telling me to go ahead and get up to the front for this five wide salute that we've got for you. Go out there and have a great day, man. All right on, buddy. Thank you. What a cool tribute to one of the sport's all time greats. And great to salute him while the final year of this career is in progress. And how about putting it on the almost getting the pole by seven one thousandths of a second. Well, and I said in our pre-race when I was down on pit road with Adam Alexander, but Jimmy Johnson is one of those guys that when the, when, when he has the excitement, the confidence in his race car and some motivation. And I'm telling you, this crowd has given him that today. This guy rises to the occasion. I think you're going to see some big things out of Jimmy today. <laughs> Shani loves it and the girls up there on the flag stand. That's a view Jimmy Johnson would like to have on the 200th lap today. <laughs> yes. and, and just think about this. I mean, he's so excited about what's going on this week. And when they wave that green flag, it's going to be hard for him not to be looking up in the flag stand. Usually you see that green flag wave and it's all focus ahead and going up through the gears, but I think he's going to want to get a glimpse of those girls waving that green flag this time. In the grandstand, nobody's sitting down. All of Southern California here to salute their native son, seven-time NASCAR champion, Jimmy Johnson from El Cajon. Hell yeah, man. They're all waving for you. Let's go have some fun. Let's have a good day. Damn, that gives me the goosebumps. That is so cool. <laughs> All right, let's get down to pit road for some late breaking and hopefully dry stories. Matt Yoakum. Well, Mike Martin Truex Jr. spotting tracks position to well everybody. He's starting at the back due to issues at inspection, no qualifying time. But that's nothing new for Truex. Think back to last year at Dover. The same situation happened. He led 132 laps and took home the trophy. He told me early on his biggest concern is just going to be traffic and trying to navigate it. But this is California Speedway, the Auto Club Speedway now, where you can run from the grass all the way to the top. Regan Smith. Well, Matt, our Daytona 500 champion from a couple weeks ago, Denny Hamlin, has had a challenging week in California. They haven't had the speed with that race car that they anticipated having, partially because they planned on this racetrack being very hot and slick. As you can see, it's not that hot and slick today. Look for them to have to work on this race car all day long to build speed into it and make as many gains on restarts as they can on long runs. Jamie? Well, Kevin Harvick is one of 10 drivers from the West Coast in the field. He's from Bakersfield, California. Harvick would love to get his second win at his home track, but it has been an uphill battle this weekend. On Friday, they had power steering issues. And on Saturday, according to his crew chief, Rodney Childers, they changed everything on this car possible at the racetrack. Hey, it worked for qualifying, though. He's top five. We'll see if it works in the race. Vince Welch. Through two races, Chase Elliott has led the most laps, but because of a couple of bad breaks, he doesn't even have a top 15 to show for it. But this nine team is not reaching for the panic button. They have speed and they have handling in their cars for the first time in a long time. Elliott and Alan Gustafson and the rest of this nine team, they believe they can be contenders to win again today. Mike. Thanks, Vince. Ready to race in Southern California. Let's check in for some race strategy with Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, this old two-mile track, it will test everything about that race car and about that driver. But today, it's going to test the size of my ulcer. You talked about it. <laughs> 25 <laughs> degrees cooler than it was on Friday. So these guys have to be on the ready to make major adjustments that first time they come down pit road. The other thing I always keep an eye on is the race analysis because that will figure into my strategy. You see the stage length there. 
the fuel window, 45 to 48 laps, but it's going to be more about a tire window. We'll follow that all day long. And look at that pit road speed. 55 miles per hour. It's easy to get busted for speeding here. In fact, Mike, it almost cost Kyle Busch the race a year ago. Thanks, Larry. Genevieve, Evie, and Lydia, Jimmy Johnson's daughters with his wife, Shani, up on the flag stand. What a moment. And another moment for Jimmy Johnson is out at the head of the field because driving that Toyota Camry TRD pace car was Jimmy's boyhood idol, Ricky Johnson. No relation, but Jimmy started his career on two wheels trying to emulate what Ricky Johnson had done. Oh, yeah. Rick Johnson has meant a lot to Jimmy Johnson. And now Rick Johnson is just so proud of what this kid has accomplished. Not a kid anymore, but he was when he all started. Look at this. Oh, man, this is amazing. There goes the green flag. And the Auto Club 400 is underway. Clint Boyer, the pole sitter, takes off. <laughs> Denny Hamlin had to start tail end. He made a pit stop on the pace laps. They changed a shock absorber on his number 11. Already four or five wide through turns one and two. This very rough back straightaway. You got to be real careful bump driving, uh, drafting down this back straightaway. To Benedetto making some big moves here early on in this race to the outside. From 10th to 4th goes the 21. Yeah, I saw him go to the outside down in 1 and 2. They did the same thing down in 3 and 4. Clint Boyer leads his first lap of 2020. And starting out back under penalty, Ricky Stenhouse, the 47. He's made a lot of gains moving up. Impound race, so they qualified, and then the cars were locked up. Here comes Kyle Busch in the 18. Yeah, Kyle Busch had a huge run off the top lane. But just be, I'm going to be really curious to see how long it takes a lot of these drivers to gravitate from the bottom to the top. But right now, it's clean air on the top. And the 41 of Cole Custer, a big loose moment right there while Kyle, Kyle Busch takes advantage of it. Matt DiBenedetto goes to fourth place. Wow. Alex Bowman slipping in in that red and black number 88 in fifth. He was the car to beat in practice yesterday or Friday. Yeah, he won. he's won everything but the pole position so far this weekend. So we watch Clint Boyer, who's picked up a little bit of trash. There's a lot of wind around here. We've seen where that leader really picks up a lot of trash. But look how rough this back straightaway is. So even into turn three as they load into the bank, as we're on board in the visor camera with Jimmy Johnson. Watch his head bounce around through those bumps through turns three and four. Battling for fifth, Di Benedetto and Al Marola. Kyle Larson right behind the 21. Looking in. Yeah, you and third place. Keep an eye on Kurt Busch today in the one. Absolutely. He's the guy I've got my eye on. He was really good in the average on a 20 lap run in practice. Second best on that only to the 88 who's right in front of him, Alex Bowman. But, uh, you know, with the 21 card to Benedetto, it scares me to be that good on the first couple laps of this race because usually it's going to fall off if your car's that good on the early run. Martin Truex has gained 16 spots. He started 32nd. Ricky Stenhouse up 14 from 34th on the grid. Yeah, that's pretty impressive by Truex already to his teammate Kyle Busch. Boy, look at all the trash. A lot of trash on the nose of that nine car covering the radiator opening. Second place, Alex Bowman. Moving past his Hendrick teammate. We've been talking about Alex Bowman, not just this weekend, but even last weekend at Las Vegas, a strong run there that didn't result in a great finish. But this weekend, it's been all about Alex Bowman, this 88 team already going to the inside of our leader, Clint Boyer, trying to take the lead. Oh, Jimmy Johnson with a big run as uh, Bowman had to check up. Three wide. Kurt Busch to the outside. And give Kurt Busch the spot. Well, don't give it to him. He took it. Here's Matt on the leader. Mike Lindboyer told me they found speed in the car. They just don't know how long it'll last because he's really concerned about how it's going to go today on the long runs. Right now, he's out front. We'll just see how long he can stay there. Bowman, Johnson continue to battle for third. So it's Ford, three Chevrolets, and then the Ford of Di Benedetto. Highest Toyota, Kurt Busch in 14th. 
Well, and, and going back to that last lap, the 88 of Bowman, I think he's got the fastest race car on the track right now. And he went for a move to try to get to the inside and get side by side with our leader, leader Clint Boyer. And by taking that chance right there, it has cost him a couple of positions and he's now trying to, uh, trying to gain back and he's got one of them back. Bowman for second. And I think right now, Bowman just needs to settle in. You know, be calm. He's got a very fast race car. Don't want to use up these tires here too early on. This very abrasive racetrack. If you push too hard, it will cost you on the long run by eating those tires up. But Kurt Busch is not going to give him this position easy. Jeff, that corner, three and four, is banked 14 degrees, as you said in our open. That uh, apron is flat. How much grip do you have down there? Well, just because less cars run down there, as rubber lays down this racetrack, that apron does have a little more grip, not to mention it it changes the balance of the car when you put the left sides, and it de-wedges the car, allowing the car to rotate. Two second goes Bowman. And Martin Truex on your right in the 19. Started 32nd, he has gained 18 positions. Oh, he's flying right now, Mike. He's on a mission. <laughs> yes, he is. Teammate Kyle Busch up high. He makes the pass as the battle's on for second on your left. Kurt Busch, Alex Bowman. These guys are fighting hard for this track position. Look at Jimmy Johnson going three wide down the front straightaway. And Jimmy Johnson <laughs> with both of them. Now you'll see Bowman with the big run to the rear bumper of Jimmy Johnson. Let's see if they're wide open through three and four here. Well, Mike, with these cool temperatures, I would think that you're going to see these guys be able to have a lot of grip here early on in this race until those tires really fall off. We saw right there Jimmy Johnson never checked up the throttle through three and four. Jamie? Well, I talked to Matt McCall about the one of Kurt Busch. They ran a lot of laps on Friday, and I know there was some buzz about how good they look, but he wasn't fully optimistic. He said they hit lap 10, which is what we're on now, and that handling on the one would go away. They adjusted accordingly, and they also thought the cloud cover would help them. Jimmy Johnson wants the lead. Oh, boy, what's this crowd going to do if he takes the lead off of turn four? You hear it in every other sport, home court or home field advantage. You're about to hear it here. And Johnson, is but he going to clear? Boyer, no. no. He's not going to give it to him. A little side draft off the quarter panel. Jimmy Johnson to keep that lead for Clint Boyer. And here comes Alex Bowman to go three wide. Man, what some great action. These cooler temperatures really enhance this package that we are running here today with that all that drag and downforce. And Alex Bowman to the lead. Clint Boyer led the first 10 laps, currently third. Jimmy Johnson had a shot at the lead in turn four. The seven-time champion trying to hold court at his home track.
NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola, a premier partner of the NASCAR Cup Series. And by Toyota, let's go places. 14 laps complete as Alex Bowman comes to the stripe. He has only led one lap here in four previous starts in the Cup Series at Auto Club Speedway. Nineteenth place, uh, William Byron there in purple and gold, carrying Kobe Bryant's colors and a shared number. Yeah, and I feel like right here, William Byron is looking in his rearview mirror to see if Chris Buescher is going to get him a, a bit of a push, trying to get as wide in on the entry of turns three and four, and actually almost brushed the wall with that right side. So at 14 laps, let's take a look at today's Liberty Mutual race strategy. Well, you know, Mike, I love strategy, and I think strategy will be all over the place here today. See right there, the fuel window is 45 to 48 laps, but it's more about a tire window. When I look at these first two stages of 60 laps each, I think they will split that in half. Cautions could certainly change that. And I know, Jamie, a lot of people may be wondering if the tires give up. Why are they running them so hard? I want you to run it hard to tell me what you've got with that race car. Well, you got to push it to know kind of where you're at. But I was shocked looking at the telemetry. We see the guys out of the throttle a little more than we expected based on these cool temperatures. They practiced on Friday, and it was almost 30 degrees hotter. We thought the track was going to have a lot more grip today, and it does. But they're still having to work the throttle a lot more than we expected. But I'll say this, 16 laps into it, we're almost to a second and a half give up from where they started to race on the stopwatch. Well, let's watch a little telemetry here. This is a Kyle Busch telemetry looking back at Denny Hamlin, but. Well, now. pretty impressive run also by Denny Hamlin coming to the front like his teammate Mark Trex Jr. Boy, that's all the way out of the throttle down through turns three and four. Whoa, even having to get out of it another time on the exit because of the 11 of Denny Hamlin being to his inside. And here comes their other teammate, Eric Jones, is going to go to the inside. Three of the Joe Gibbs cars under a blanket. Martin Truex battled side by side with Kyle Busch for about four laps, but then passed Kyle and has moved up another three places. And that's what Kyle was so good at last year when he won this race was on those long runs. There's a guy, Kyle Larson, making a move on Clint Boyer. Vince? Larson started ninth, had gotten all the way up to fourth, but the car is just too loose for him to go much further up. He says, especially in one and two, he's got a handful. They're looking forward to an adjustment at that first pit stop that Larry was talking about. Eric Almarola is the third car in this line. We listened in. Coming off the corners at 75, 7,600, the boat is not happy. Yeah, a lot of times you can hear that the engine being pulled down. You need that engine to rev up and really get free and be able to carry that speed down the straightaway. So clearly something is binding up in the car for Eric Almarola that he's not happy with that straightaway speed. Matt, our pole sitter, Clint Boyer, has dropped back to seventh and may fall here to eighth. What's up? He is slowly fading, Mike. His biggest issue, the car just too tight. This first run in the center of the corner, just trying to hold on to that stop, but already making plans of whether to go a minor or significant adjustment. Alex Bowman, the leader. Jimmy Johnson in Chevrolets. Ryan Blaney's forward in third. Kurt Busch and Matt DiBenedetto, the top five after 19 laps.
This week in Southern California began with a great tribute to Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the other seven lives lost in that helicopter crash. Five-time NBA champion, twice NBA Finals MVP, and 18-time All-Star. Was drafted by the Charlotte Hornets and traded to the Lakers before he ever played a game for them. This is the Trioval Grass here at Auto Club Speedway, and there are special tributes on the cars of Daniel Suarez, Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, who has just taken second place, and William Byron. And lap 24 is up on the board, and the fans have come to their feet to honor the Laker great and share in the tributes here at the Speedway. Uh, Diecast from Blaney's car will benefit Mamba on three, and Diecast and shirts from the William Byron car will benefit after school All Stars. Daniel Suarez auctioning off his gloves and shoes from this race, which are painted in a special tribute to Kobe Bryant, one of the all-time greats of any sport. It's a great moment, Mike, and you're right. He was just a legend, and I, I was so honored to be able to also carry that 24 on the side of my race car because I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan, and uh, to, to be able to, to, you know, have that 24 and know that Another guy out there is doing the things that he was doing in the, another sport, the NBA, that was also carrying the 24 board. Did that mean a lot to me over the years? So we're coming to lap 26 here at Auto Club Speedway. As Larry told us earlier, that means not the fuel window, but the tire window is open to pretty neatly uh, split this stage in half. Martin Truex raced his way up through the field. Uh, Truex. Fought his way to 11th, almost to the top 10, and here he is on pit road for the first taker under green flag pit stops. Eric Jones with him. And we know, Mike, once cars are on pit road to put those fresh four Goodyear tires on, it's not long before they all start following him. Matt? When you look at the run that he has had from the back, and he had that confidence this morning when I talked to him, that they were going to have a good day if circumstances definitely fell their way. They have Dustin Niekase on the front and Lee Cunningham already done on the back going around the car pretty tight, especially through the center exit. So an air pressure adjustment there. Meanwhile, his teammate Eric Jones trying to jumpstart his season as well as the Toyotas are on pit road. Chase Elliott is in. So is Joey Logano, pole sitter Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin all coming to pit road. Regan. Joey Logano on the left side of your screen pits with the 22 car. That race car is a little bit too free right now. That means the right rear wants to slide to the wall as he goes through the corner. Vince. Line of Chase Elliott. He likes his car, says the car is good. It's just the traffic he's had to maneuver. Four tires in a way. Boyer's crew goes to work. Four fresh tires, and uh, boy, Chase Elliott coming in. He got it all. Yes, he did. And this is a, a entry for pit road that you can be very aggressive as we watch Chase Elliott going down through the gears. I don't know if that's a left front tire that may be locked up at that final breaking point before entering pit road. Matt. And Jimmy Johnson on his way down to his guys looking to add to his racing resume here. Easy entry comes to a stop and Cliff Daniels was really looking at getting a lot of knowledge over this first run from the 15 to the 20 to the 25 lap mark. Jimmy said the car was a little bit on the free side, but pretty darn good here on the 48. Boy, Alex Bowman put on a smoke show getting down to pit road speed here. You see him on the right of your screen, full screen now. Jamie? In four previous starts, he led one lap. He's already led 18 laps today. The car has been pretty good. He was just saying in those last couple of laps, tight in the front, snaps a little loose off a Ford tire stop here. He has the advantage of the opening when he pulls out of his pit box. As they work around to the left side, they'll get those tires on, but the car has been good. The 88's one to watch. William Byron has cycled around to the lead. Uh, watch uh, the 88's entry here. Yeah, Alex Bowman. You, we talked about Chase Elliott attacking it. Look at Alex Bowman attacking this entry right out to the grass as he locks up tires getting to the line. 55 mile an hour pit road speed. They give you a five mile an hour gimme. So everybody tries to run 59.9.
Ricky Stenhouse would have assumed the lead but and will he had to start last because of a bodywork violation that sent both Stenhouse and Ryan Priest to the rear of the starting grid and sent both their crew chiefs home for the day. Well, Stenhouse will be your leader. He is the only car that has not been to pit road. And we've seen this play out before. These guys are losing a lot of valuable time on track, even more so this weekend than last weekend at Las Vegas because this track is so much more abrasive. We know Brian Patty is not here, crew chief in this car right now, but that strategy is still in play, even on a track that has a lot more fall off on the tires. Right, Eddie Pardue calling the shots today for Stenhouse. And all four Gibbs cars together, broken up by uh, Kyle Larson, the 42 there. So Stenhouse the leader Bowman in second Blaney Johnson Di Benedetto. And the Toyota's all in one pack 11th to 15th. Yeah we documented this over the weekend and, and through a pre race about those Toyotas. I mean they dominated this series last year 19 wins for Joe Gibbs racing. And yet this year I don't know they just haven't shown as much speed. I think they're still going to be a major factor in race wins and championships. But right now we're definitely seeing where the Chevys and Fords have picked it up. So guys when I see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 47 running two seconds slower than Alex Bowman who's running in second right now and considering you spend 45 seconds on pit road including the stop if he runs another couple laps he will be a lap down to leader Alex Bowman when he pits. Good point Larry. Well the best thing I've seen today is Upland and Rancho Cucamonga to the west. Uh, the ceiling is lifting. The sun poked through for just a second. The weather is improving and Ricky Stenhouse is leading in Fontana. The NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by McDonald's. The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet is made with 100% fresh beef at participating U.S. McDonald's. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. 
Ricky Stenhouse has just completed his pit stop. We're at lap 36. Alex Bowman cycles back to the lead over Blaney and Johnson. But this happened while we were in break. Now, Kyle Larson was sixth prior to the pit cycle, lost a lot of spots due to a problem changing front tires. And here comes Hamlin. Well, we saw the four car of Kevin Harvick give a push to the 11, Denny Hamlin, that allowed him to get on the rear bumper of the 42. But then he just locked on and really didn't back off as they're entering the corner into turn one. And it eventually just gets the 42 of Larson going sideways and makes heavy contact to that outside wall. From the McDonald's onboard camera. Four tight. Buffer to buffer. Oh, that's heavy contact. Hang on to it. So Larson came to pit road as a result of this. And Vince can update us. Well, talking to the crew, and no one indicated that there had been any issue previously between Larson and Hamlin. Just Hamlin got that run and got into the back of Larson. Significant right side damage. They repaired that damage, and they just told Larson, if you feel any tire rub at all, bring it back to us. But so far, so good. By the way, they were back there in that spot because they had a very slow pit stop when they came to pit road. Really slow on the right front. Cost them seven, uh, several positions during that stop. And, uh, uh, lost that track position, got him back in that mess. I could tell you, I, I know Larson and, and Denny Hamlin, these guys play golf together. I mean, they hang out a lot together on the road throughout the season. So th this is no bad blood. I, I really just think it was something where Denny needed to just check up a little bit more, give him a little more space as they got to the corner. Three of the four Gibbs cars right together, and the third car in that little dust-up was Kevin Harvick. Jamie. And Mike, Kevin Harvick started fifth. He has dropped back to 14th, and I started the race by telling you it has been an uphill battle for the Ford team. They changed everything possible on that car yesterday. Bad news for Kevin Harvick fans. This car, according to Kevin, it's junk. It's terrible. It's garbage. It's out of the track. It won't do anything in traffic. They made adjustments on the last stop, and it doesn't seem to be helping. Wow. He's currently 13th. Now, Ricky Stenhouse, with that pit stop, did stay on the lead lap. He's 40 seconds behind the leader and not sure if he'll be able to hold a lead lap position before we get to the end of the stage break. Well, one advantage of if it stays green and you go longer is when you put those new tires on the other teams, their tires have now started to fall off. So all that time he was losing, he's starting to gain a little bit of it back. But look at Alex Bowman not far behind him. So he's going to have to make sure he this car is really good on this the end of this run in order to stand the lead lap. Well, guys, we know that crew chief Brian Patty is not here. He was ejected yesterday afternoon after some inspection issues. And interim crew chief Eddie Pardue, who actually has been an Xfinity Series crew chief, he's going down the same road as Brian Patty. They're using sports analytics and sports prediction. And what he did, he left him out there until he knew that if he didn't pit, he was going to be a lap down. And considering that he's basically got about seven lap fresher tires, if they can hold on for another 19 laps he'll stay on the lead lap but I just don't think his car is as good as Alex Bowman's all right we'll see Alex Bowman the race leader lapping at 41 79 Stenhouse a one full second quicker the last time by 42 laps complete in California but Wendy's is rolling out breakfast nationwide starting tomorrow morning here's more
The Silverado and new Silverado HD are the strongest, most advanced Silverados ever. Learn more at Chevy.com. 47 laps complete this time by in Fontana, California. Alex Bowman, Ryan Blaney, Jimmy Johnson. Ricky Stenhouse has just gone a lap down of the race leader Bowman. This uh, little group of Toyotas, it's smaller now with Hamlin and Truex. Eric Jones a bit further back. And uh, boy, some of this side by side racing got Martin Truex fired up. The 20 and the 11. They can both kiss my hand. Tim Paul McKiss. <laughs> spotter Clayton, Clayton Hughes. Hughes spotter. <laughs> Trying to keep some humor in there and keep your driver calmed down. But, you know, I, I understand sometimes you when you have a fast race car like Mark Truex does and you're, you, you're making a pass or trying to attempt to pass and you're getting raced harder by your teammates than you are some of the other com competitors out there, it gets very frustrating. Christopher Bell has just made a pit stop. Jamie? Yes, he had a bad vibration when he turned the wheel. He thought maybe it was a right front issue. He couldn't keep it out any longer. They brought it in and just made those tire changes. So Bell will go a lap down and close to two laps down as we're 12 laps away from the end of stage one. Boy, I just can't state it enough how impressive this 88 team led by Greg Ives and Alex Bowman Hendrick Motorsports have been with this 88 uh, all weekend long. Now Ryan Blaney trying to keep pace. Matt. You, Mike, when you listen to a lot of the different teams on the scanner, you're hearing conversations about who is the best car at this point of the race, and they're all pointing to the 12 of Blaney. Now recall back on that pit stop, Blaney made an air pressure change, trying to get a little bit more grip in the back of the race car. He told Todd Gordon, we're about halfway there, but he's still looking pretty solid on the stopwatch. Yeah, so, you know, Matt had that report there. He said, we're about halfway there. That means on the adjustments, those adjustments that Ryan Blaney is asking for to uh, to help his cars balance in the grip level. So that means, you know, send a signal to Todd Gordon. Hey, I need you to make some bigger adjustments on that next pit stop. Matt Benedetto looking good in green this week. Holding fourth place, second forward in the running order, Vince. Well, they've been really happy with their race car uh, all weekend long. And De Benedetto and crew chief Greg Irwin working together this season for the first time, still learning one another, but they've hit their stride already. Uh, the right rear air pressure adjustment on that last stop, De Benedetto said he thought it helped them initially in this run, but now the car has swung loose. And Irwin said, yeah, I think that change helped right away, but in the long run, we need to go back on it. So they're still making head Way, still learning one another, but boy, they got to like their running position up inside the top five. 50 laps complete in Fontana. Alex Bowman out front will take you Fox side by side.
54 laps complete in Southern California, where aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Discover what's possible. Keep moving. Goodyear, more driven. Alex Bowman, your race leader, has one lap fresher tires than everybody else in the top 10 right now. And we were wondering this battle between Blaney and Bowman, those closing laps last week at Las Vegas, were they for real? As we see a battle here, Eric Almarola going to the inside of Matt DiBenedetto. It's for real, Mike. I mean, not only is Ryan Blaney and Alex Bowman for real, but um, so are the Chevrolet Camaros right now. We were wondering if they're going to be strong. Well, we've got three of them up there in the top six. Stage points matter. A lot of jostling going on here with five to go in stage one. We've been caution free so far. The only incident was lap 33 where Denny Hamlin got into Kyle Larson. Larson had to pit and lost two laps, but no caution uh, for that. We've been green all the way. Toyota top performers. Kyle Busch up into the top ten for the first time today. Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, Eric Jones, all in the top 15. Here's Regan. Well, Mike, it's been a very good run for Denny Hamlin. They didn't anticipate this car being quite that good, but as you documented at the start of the race, they came in and they changed a right rear shock before it even went green. He's had to work his way all the way from the back of the pack up to that 12th place position. The only thing he has said on the radio all day long is he thought maybe the four car pushed him into the 42 car. Our cameras on Fox proved differently to that, though. We know what actually happened there. Thanks, Regan. Kyle Busch trying to hold down the final stage point here in about four laps. There's the Hendrick running order. Alex Bowman out front of Jimmy Johnson. Jamie? And he has led 40 laps today, Mike. I talked to Greg Ives, his crew chief, this morning. He said last year we got so tired of qualifying 18th to 22nd, we can never make up those spots. And he said we are losing out on all these valuable stage points. Well, they have changed their philosophy, the way they attempt the race weekend and qualifying. It's paying off. He's about to win this stage. And on the left, Joey Logano about to take sixth from Matt DiBenedetto, who is fading just a bit at the end of this stage. Chase Elliott may have a problem, Vince. Well, they're certainly hoping to wait until they get to the end of the stage, but Chase Elliott just radioed in and said, I feel like I'm on the cords. He said, be ready because I might have to bring it to you early. So the team up on the wall and waiting, but hoping he can get two more laps out of it to the end of stage one. Well, the pits close with two laps to go at the end of each stage, so it would be a penalty if he were to pit now. Yeah, see I think how this right plays now, out. You, you got to hold on to it just, you know, for one lap. He, you, even if you have to back off your pace, you have you can't come down pit road right now. But boy, some uh, nervous times for that crew in that nine car after they had a pretty disastrous day last week at Las Vegas. Yeah, they had the best long run car last week. Appeared to have victory in sight. Circumstances changed everything. But Mike, we talk about how important these stage points are. We saw where Chase Elliott won both stages last week. He won a stage in uh, Daytona, and it has kept him up there in the top 10 in points so far, even though he hasn't had good results. So that's why all these drivers and teams work so hard for these stage points. You're right, Jeff. He's not had a top 10 finish, but he's well up in the point standings. Final lap, stage one. This is the most laps that Alex Bowman has led in a race since he led 88 of them in his Chicago win last year. Green and white checkered flag in the air for stage win for Alex Bowman. Ryan Blaney comes across second 4.6 seconds back. Jimmy Johnson third. Eric Almarola and Kurt Busch the top five.
Look at this vast two mile super speedway in Southern California, the former Kaiser Steel Mill site. They built Liberty ships here for World War II. And somewhere in the midst of all those campers and party center, oh, there he is, there he is, Michael Waltrip. <laughs> hey, Mike. I'm over on the back straightaway, and man, this is such a festive atmosphere. These folks are enjoying the stage break. Saw some of their favorite drivers charge up into the top 10. We're just part of the party over here on the back straightaway, enjoying racing here in Southern California. Michael, are you pedaling? No, I got a button I'm pushing with my knee. <laughs> I got my Jeff Gordon yeah. antique hood, though. I like that ride you got there, Mikey. Did he call you an antique? <laughs> he did, did he? Darn it. <laughs> well, he's sort of right. Uh, looks like a lot of fun. Party Central, wherever Michael Waltrip is. Race Central is going to be Pit Road. It's open, and here they come, Regan. Well, it's been a great start to the day for Eric Almirola, up two spots from his sixth place starting position. That race car is great at the end of the runs and on long runs, but firing off, it's just a little bit too free, a small adjustment for that. Jamie? It's about the happiest I've ever heard and seen Alex Bowman over a race car is this weekend. Says now it starts off good, just starts losing the nose a little bit, but just fine out there in the clean air. A four tire stop here. Matt? Ryan Blaney comes to a stop. He's focused on getting more grip, especially in the back of the race car and exit, but he also had a small vibration with about three or four laps to go. Meanwhile, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, he too is in. Jimmy felt like if he could have run the car like he wanted, it would have been too harsh on that right front. An air pressure change. They backed up a little bit on the stop, the adjustment they made on the first stop. The race off pit road is sponsored by Ram. Kurt Busch, no tires, puts him to the front of the field. And Jimmy Johnson beats the cars that he was racing against. There's Johnson. Blaney Bowman and the reaction from Team 48. Oh, yeah, it feels good to bust off a great stop like that here early in the race. Let's uh, dial up our stage one winner, Alex Bowman. Hey, Alex, this is Jeff and Mike up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? I got gotcha. you. Well, man, it's for real. We've been uh, documenting and all weekend long. You've had a great uh, practice session. You were great the end of last uh, week's race in Las Vegas. And man, that thing looks really, really good. How important is it for you to get off to a really strong start here in 2020? Yeah, it's super important to us um, for for a variety of reasons. But man, it's uh, it's been a heck of a lot of fun driving these new Camaros. Uh, last time we had Cincinnati on the car, we ran third. So hopefully we run a couple spots better for them today. But uh, this thing's been great. Greg has made great calls. Every week we've been showing up to the racetrack really really close to dialed in and just been able to make really small changes so i don't know uh if it's all the body or, or what we've changed but it's a heck of a lot of fun driving these race cars this year all right well you're putting on a heck of a show thank you have a good one thanks jeff kyle larson stopped before pit road was open so he'll restart tail end of the pack alex bowman your stage one winner All right, hey, so.
The NASCAR Cup Series on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Built Ford Proud. And by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Close calls on pit road. Watch the right rear on Alex Bowman. And the uh, air hose gets caught and loosened. That could have been a big problem for him. Now, the reason the one of Kurt Busch went to the top of our pylon was he missed his pit stall. So here we are in the Geico restart zone. Ready for the green flag for stage two and Jimmy Johnson leading his first laps at Auto Club Speedway since his victory here in 2016. We saw he had a very fast race car, could never really get clear of Clint Boyer earlier in this race to take the lead. Let's see what he can do now with that clean air. Three and four wide behind him as they jockey for position entering turn three. See that eight of Tyler Reddick down there on the bottom. He made some big moves early in the, the start of this race, so I think he has a very fast race car in the short runs. Way up top, the green car, Kyle Busch, lost six spots, making a lot of adjustments on his pit stop. Was that five wide? Yes, we saw five wide and still seeing five wide. Wow. Well, what a lucky moment for that 88 pit crew. You saw where the tire carrier went to slide that right rear tire in and just nicked the hose and pulled it under the right rear tire. Luckily, it didn't go further underneath that car. Ryan Blaney knows how important it is. The, one of the fastest cars after that last run was the 88 of Bowman. He's got to keep him behind him, so he's going to fight for this position and track position very hard. And look, he's got help. There's two more Penske Fords right behind Bowman in Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski. And there's a pass for the lead. Ryan Blaney gets a huge run and a push from Bowman and goes right by Jimmy Johnson down the front straightaway. Ryan Blaney's our point leader coming into this race. And but for a cute few coulda, woulda, shouldas, he could be coming in here with two victories already. Oh, I think he and this 12 team and Todd Gordon are for real. Look at Jimmy Johnson. Big shove to the rear bumper of the 88 of Bowman. After what we saw with the 42 of Larson and the 11 of Hamlin, I, I'd be real careful with some of those moves. Well, Jimmy Johnson could have uh, slid right up in front of his teammate Bowman, chose not to. I think that's a smart move here early on in this race. Now at the end of the stage break, Stenhouse, Ty Dillon, and Suarez all took the wave around to get back on the lead lap. Uh, the nine of Chase Elliott made it to the end of the stage without a tire problem, made his pit stop, and here he is challenging for seventh, Vince. Well, they thought maybe that he had a loose wheel, but they looked at it, everything looked fine, the cords were fine. Chase said he had felt a vibration, so they were concerned about it, but Chase then came back and said, you know, maybe I just drove it too hard early on, so they made an air pressure adjustment in that right front, hasn't complained to the vibration since. Second place, Bowman Johnson, this asphalt is as wide as either side of I-10, <laughs> just out back of the speedway here. It is so wide, so many different grooves. You've got the seams that you have to be a little bit careful of. Three wide for the lead here. Jimmy Johnson going in for it in out. the middle. In and out. It, Still in and out, just up two. Isn't that in a burger chain? <laughs> no, out. he means you got a car inside and you got a car out. outside. And both of them go by Ryan Blaney for the lead. Watch Ryan Blaney maybe come back. Fans going nuts for local guy Jimmy Johnson. Where's Blaney going to go? They had him boxed in. Now he breaks out to the bottom, and Blaney goes after the lead. You see Ryan Blaney gets up, dumps air on that rear spoiler. Jimmy Johnson side drafts him and pulls him back as he shoots forward and takes the lead. Now he's going to slide up in front of the 48. Ryan Blaney spent a couple of nights this week in a teepee in the California desert. Um, I have no words either. <laughs> you know what? TP That's pretty was cool. When I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's got to be a little bit frustrating for Alex Bowman. As you see, Joey Logano coming into the picture. And we talked about how important restarts are and being aggressive. Joey Logano will be a real factor. I think he's got a good long run car here also. But for Bowman, he just can't. He's got a fast race car. He can't seem to make the moves to get the lead. He's got to be very patient right now because it does seem like his car in the long runs does prevail. 
Kyle Busch back into the top 10, Matt. Kyle is back to even, Mike. When they hit pit road, he was in the 10th position. But Adam Stevens said, look, we cannot run here in 10. They didn't wholesale the setup, but they made four different adjustments, trying to make improvements, already back up the 10th, trying to make his way even further here before the next stage. So he's gained five spots since the restart. Martin Truex has also gained five. Denny Hamlin, three. When we heard some radio communication between Mark Trex Jr. and his teammates, or talking about his teammates, Denny Hamlin and the 20 of Eric Jones, and I think he's pretty frustrated how much he's having to fight these guys, but right there, the nine car just showed how you're going to make that pass, dive into the bottom and up in front of Denny Hamlin. I rate driver on line two. Kill the, kill the front tires, too. Doesn't help when a teammate's race is like every week as well. Yeah, I don't understand why I pass them. Well, they can't just help push me by the next guy and not push it, you know, the next guy back past me. I, I just don't understand that. It's like kind of stupid. Well, they don't like getting beaten. Right now, Mark Truex Jr. has a very fast race car. He's a guy that has shown when you give him that track position, he's going to make something out of it. Well, like Larry Max always said, you don't have to work with me, just don't work against me. Kyle Hood, hard at work. Seventy eight laps complete. Here's today's Ford performance track facts. Roger Penske and Les Richter built this speedway. It's the oldest asphalt surface on the schedule. This uh, tracks pit road stood in for Daytona in the movie Ford versus Ferrari and Ford has 11 wins at Auto Club Speedway with nine different drivers. A Ford is out front. That is Ryan Blaney and we'll show you how he did it battling Jimmy Johnson Alex Bowman for the front spot. Using his teammate Joey Logano also. You get a run off that top groove, use the draft, a little side draft also as he pulls ahead going into turn one. Well, for a closer look at setups, here's Larry Mack with the Ford Performance virtual car. 
Yeah, I mean, Mike and Jeff, we really never heard the word side draft except the Daytona and Talladega until we started running the Cerro package. But let's lose our Ford Aerodynamics to show you what's going on. When that car goes up there, which is what Ryan Blaney did against the left side of Jimmy Johnson, it dumps air on the rear spoiler and then in that left rear wheel opening, it really doesn't speed the 12 car up. But what it did, it slowed the 48 down. And that's how Ryan Blaney was able to complete that piece, that pass by using the side draft. Thanks, Larry. Now, the Laker connection to Ryan Blaney goes even deeper. His dad, World of Outlaws champion Dave, his uncle Dale, also a great racer, played basketball for West Virginia University. He is in their Sports Hall of Fame, and Dale Blaney was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Went racing instead. Uh, the 95 has dropped a cylinder, we're told. And is now down to the track apron. Boy, rough start for green. rookie Christopher Bell. In these first three races. You see the smoke out the pipes. That's never a good sign. We'll take you back to our garage stall here. Just we'll turn in like we. So Bell, if he's able to coast all the way around, will turn into the garage. And Mike, you see right now the sun is out. I mean, we're, we've got the most sun on this racetrack, and we know what that does. Even though it's a cool day, that heats up that race surface and changes the grip level, changes the balance of the front grip to the rear grip of these cars. i got to believe that's playing a factor right now for a lot of cars out there. Got one word for you, Jeff. Microclimate. <laughs> if you don't like the weather in Fontana, drive 10 miles in any direction, and it will be different. Fifth place, Martin Truex, Jr., Closing yeah. right up on Chase Elliott. Yeah, Truex is finally able to get by his teammate, Denny Hamlin. Now he's closing up on the nine, Vince. Chase Elliott, you know, it always amazes me, Jeff, how you guys at 175 mile an hour plus can keep your sense of humor. Elliott made a pass. Chris spotter Eddie DeHaunt came over the radio and said, hey, nice move there, bud. Elliott responds, eh, hey, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but it's impressive. <laughs> All right, Martin Truex on the move up into fifth place. And now that we do have a sunny Southern California day, how about a Fox NASCAR Sunday? Crank it up. Martin Truex moves past Joey Logano into fourth place. While we were in Crank It Up, uh, Ricky Stenhouse, who had taken the wave around during the stage break, made a pit stop, and now he's fallen off the lead lap. Pit stops in the offing shortly. Ryan Blaney, the leader at 86 laps.
NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by GEICO, official partner of NASCAR. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. Eric Jones pitted from 12th place. Ross Chastain has also made a stop, and now Kyle Busch on pit road. Uh, older brother Kurt with him, pole sitter Clint Boyer as well. Green flag pit stops here. Cole Custer is in, and Michael McDowell. Matt. Mike, still not the day that Kyle Busch had hoped for. Not made any gains on that 18. He said the front end just does not seem any better than the previous run. And now the right rear is a little bit more out of the racetrack, too. Some adjustments there for the 18. Meanwhile, the 14 of Boyer's in. Boy, his day has really gone south. The car just wicked tight. Cannot get it to turn. Some big air pressure changes for the 14. A lot of cars hitting pit road now. Here comes Logano, Truex, Elliott, Keselowski, Hamlin, Almirola, and more. Regan. Well, Denny Hamlin, his race car right now, just a little bit too tight. We see Joey Logano on the right side of the screen. That race car as well is too tight in the dirty air as he runs spins. The nine of Chase Elliott, he likes it, said he's still maybe a little bit too aggressive on that right front, but otherwise the car's coming to him. And we expect the leader this time. Here he is, Ryan Blaney. And his team Penske Ford. And more lockups as they come <laughs> to pit road. Alex Bowman comes in with him, and so does Jimmy Johnson. Class of the field pitting right here at lap 91. Kevin Harvick also in. Jamie? In 88 of Alex Bowman was two seconds back. Blaney came in from second to fourth tire stop here. The car has been solid all race, Matt. Jimmy Johnson comes to a stop. He said his car about the same as it was the previous one. He could use more forward grip on exit. Meanwhile, Blaney says the car's a little bit tighter down in three and four. Todd Gordon trying to fix it with a little bit more air pressure adjustment in the back. And they come out just as they came in together. William Byron picks up the lead. And now he will come to pit road in his Kobe Bryant inspired number 24. We saw where the 19 of Mark Truex Jr. pitted just a lap before these other leaders has a big run and momentum coming off the top as those other cars come off pit road. You see him closing fast on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. That 19 was of Truex Jr. was in fourth position before that sequence. And caution is out for Clint Boyer. Looks like a tire might be down, maybe a left front tire. Leaders just now start finish. Yeah, this is one of those tracks where if you go low on air pressure to find some extra grip and you abuse that left front tire by hitting the apron down in one and two early in a run, sometimes you can get damaged. Don't know if that's what's caused this issue on the 14 or not. He pitted just three laps ago. Now Corey LaJoy and Ryan Priest were in the pit lane. Uh, at the time the caution came out, they both finished their stops and went back out. And here's Boyer limping onto pit road. Yeah, Bottom already, of your screen. Already he felt an issue. I, I really believe, Mike, that down in three and four on that last corner and lap down the front, before he got on the front straightaway, he probably went down on that apron and it's a lot of heavy load in that sidewall of the tire on low air pressures and probably caused that tire to go down. A lot of damage to the splitter is going to be probably their biggest problem right now besides whether they're a lap down or not. First caution of the day for cause other than the stage break, Larry. Yeah, Goodyear tells these teams do not go below 18 PSI on the left side. I know for a fact there are teams down to 15, 16. But, Jeff, to your point, I've talked to several crew chiefs. They have towed their driver after a green flag stop until the pressure's built up. Try to go above the bumps, especially on the backstretch, and do not go on that apron in three and four. Yeah, Larry brings up a really good point. There's not a lot you can do to avoid those heavy bumps on the back straightaway. See them working on that front splitter, what's left of it anyway. Uh, they'll have to bring him back in and secure that or remove it. Pit road is open as we're under the second caution flag of the day. Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, Jimmy Johnson, Martin Truex. As drivers lock them up at the entrance to pit road.
NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks, Motor Trends Back to Back Truck of the Year, and by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Coming to complete lap 95. Welcome back to the Auto Club 400 on Fox as they approach the Geico restart zone. Look at him fan out, Mike. Four, five wide, three turns, one and two. Oh, three wide, the three of Austin Dillon. Didn't carry any momentum off that corner, uh, second corner and losing some spots. How about Joey Logano with some short run speed? And Truex to the outside. Oh, it's gonna get to the rear bumper of Logano. And here comes the 24 Bo uh, Byron. With a big run and Alex Bowman almost shut it down by closing down on Bowman. And remember, William Byron, he hit it absolutely perfect. He was on pit road. He came in from 19th spot on pit road while, while he was taking four tires when the caution came out. That's, that's what I call the perfect storm. <laughs> that goes in your favor. Love these restarts. Las Vegas in here, the way they fan out and the aggression that we see in the first couple of laps under green. Well, and you see, you're seeing one of the most aggressive right there, and that is the 22 of Logano. Saw that where Bowman start on that inside lane, you really want to be on that outside lane, it seems to me, like on these starts. So he lost some spots since the restart. Up front, two drivers that have been class of the field all day. Ryan Blaney, Jimmy Johnson. Keeping close tabs on one another as everybody else scrambles for position behind them. And we've seen with Jimmy Johnson, he has some short run speed, seems to fall off compared to some of these others. You see, look at this battle with the 22 of Joey Logano. Here comes the 88 of Bowman through the middle. Four and wide going into turn three with Keselowski in there. Keselowski just shot threaded the needle. Shot right through there. Well, when these cars get side by side, Mike, you see that two slide right up in front of the front bumper of the 24 of William Byron. They're not done yet. But we see where two cars get side by side, it stalls both of them out so much that it gives a huge run to the car behind. But Jeff, I don't see anybody, teammates, uh, manufacturer link-ups, nobody's working with anybody. It's every man for himself. Well, when you get that run, Mike, and you get the momentum, you just have to go with it. And that's, you know, we've always seen that in the super speedways. Rarely do we see that on tracks like we have here in this two mile oval, flat corner to oval here at Auto Club Speedway. We are coming off of turn two. You can see these guys, they just get that huge run. There's Bowman, he goes to the rear bumper of Logano, but then Keselowski had a run also as they got side by side. And that was a lot of fun to watch going into turn three. That first and only caution so far for cause came from a flat tire for pole sitter Clint Boyer. Matt. Mike, our old teammate and Hall of Famer Buddy Baker did so much development work on the inner liner. You can see where you've got the outer and the inner valve stem. Now on that stop, Ryan Mulder, the front tire changer, went to grab that last lug. And when he did, he clipped that valve stem with the impact socket, sheared it off. And that's why we saw so much air out of that tire quickly. I'm Boyer. Oh yeah, that explains it. We saw something very similar happen to Chase Elliott last week. And, and it doesn't always take the actual uh, pit gun to hit that valve stem. Sometimes it could just be a lug nut that drops into one of those openings in the wheel and can then also get the inner liners uh, air pressure and knocked it out. Logano and Elliott battle for fifth place. Kyle Busch up five spots and Martin Truex had dropped seven and now he's got three of those back in the 19. 
May slot in behind Logano here. Here's Martin Truex. Go to 22. I should have wrecked him. Next time I will. Yes, sir. Tired of it. What Tr Truex is wound up today. And now here he is side by side with Joey Logano. It's a big run from the 11 of Hamlin. And don't look behind now, but look behind him. The 18 of Kyle Busch actually came in under that caution flag. It took four tires. They had five or six laps on those tires. They wanted even a little bit fresher tires for this restart. Well, Martin Truex's day got off to a bad start when they failed inspection not once for a body issue. They uh, then failed again for rear toe out and then failed again. Finally, they got through inspection the fourth time, which means they were not allowed to qualify. They lose a crew member. They lose 30 minutes of practice time next week. And by the way, he had to start at the rear. Well, and they had some issues last week on a pit stop. He had a car that could win last weekend and they had an issue. So I think this frustration goes all the way back to last weekend's race at Las Vegas. Or and you're hearing it play out on his radio. Second place, Johnson and Bowman. Jamie? And they're running side by side. Mike, you had mentioned the teammates on the restart not necessarily working together. Well, Bowman thought the same thing. He said, why can't we just work together instead of against each other? And his spotter, who's very quick on his feet, Kevin Hamlin, said, hey, buddy, I'll do a better job. But you have to know, this is Jimmy Johnson's home track. He's got the eye of the tiger. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, all Jimmy Johnson sees right now is he wants that checkered flag at this racetrack really bad. Let's go side by side. One hundred seven laps complete. Let's uh, check in on the Coca Cola family of drivers. See how they're faring. Denny Hamlin in eighth. Joey Logano twelfth. Austin Dillon. Uh, Daniel Suarez on the lead lap. Bubba Wallace one down. Race leader Ryan Blaney has an issue. Uh, trash on the grill has always been a problem here. Hot dog wrappers whatever. Uh, and he is the race leader. So they've told him uh, about an eighth of a lap ahead is the 77 of Reed Sorensen. Blaney might be able to get up behind Sorensen, and the air pressure change would take the debris off his grill. But Sorensen's not that fast. He would likely lose the lead doing that. Well, if he plans it right, and, and the timing works out, I think he'll be fine. What he doesn't want to do is when he looks in his mirror, he sees the 88 of Bowman closing in on him. He doesn't want to have to give up that lead to Bowman. Want to see a top to bottom shot? While we're away, Kevin Harvick. 
And you can see just that little bit of side draft that the 22 did to the rear bumper of the 18 allows those guys to lose so much momentum off the corner. Four of Kevin Harvick goes shooting by like he's like he's just shot out of a cannon, like he's got 100 more horsepower in that car. Don't you think Hamlin and Kyle Busch love seeing that? <laughs> Not. Not, yeah. So here's Blaney right up to Reed Sorensen, and yep. Yeah, that was perfect. You just close up. It's amazing how that air just starts to trip up. You can see almost all that debris. That might be a piece of tape they put on the nose there on the 12 now, but pretty much all the gone. As you can see, yeah, that's just a tiny bit of tape that they added to the nose of that car. A thing of beauty. That was perfect. Eric Almirola back at 13th here with Joey Logano. Getting a little, is that help? Down the straightaway? Well, um, <laughs> ask Kyle Larson, because yeah. Denny Hamlin was think, thought he was giving him some help, and that didn't turn out so well. How about Tyler Reddick in the eight? I told you these dirt guys like to slide around on this racetrack and work all these different lanes and grooves. Pretty, um, pretty impressive run, 12th right now for Tyler Reddick. One of six drivers in the field from California, Vince. You know, so impressed with uh, Reddick when I was talking with him earlier today. Sense of confidence, even though it is, you know, just a handful of races into his cup career, not overwhelmed at all by the challenge of jumping from the Xfinity Series to the Cup Series. He and his crew chief, Randall Burnett, they worked together in the Xfinity Series. They made the transition up the Cup together, and you've got a real sense that these guys have it together, and they're going to continue to improve as this season progresses. It's been impressive so far. Well, it's been a good early start for them. Here's our Xfinity fastest lap. One lap ago, Kyle Busch uh, with a bit of a push from teammate Eric Jones. Fastest on track. When we talk about fresh rubber on those, with those four Goodyears, they've got about five less, six less laps on them than the rest of the field. That will make a difference. And we're seeing it with that fastest lap of Kyle Busch's. Well, the sun is out. We're past halfway. We're going to have a complete race today, and that is music to the ears of one Michael Waltrip. Thanks, Mike. I'm down in the pits here behind the scenes with Paul Swan. Paul Swan, former middle linebacker for the Bowling Green University team, and now the tire carrier on this team. I saw you breaking down film. The guys are airing the tires. Your job really just starts after 13 seconds of organized chaos ends. How'd that stop look to you? Oh, we made a couple mistakes. It was a low 13. We like to be in that 12 second range for the stops. And, you know, if it goes really good, we like to be in the 11 seconds. But that's, that's, we got, we got to be, that's almost got to be perfect to do that. So we're having a solid day right now. We just got to keep it up, keep helping Austin get spots skiing on the track. And hopefully we get a good finish out of this day. A lot going on down here still, guys, after these pit stops. It's really interesting to see. His driver, Austin Dillon, currently 18th and on the lead lap about 13 and a half back of the lead. Now this is what I call working together is the two of Brad Keselowski and the 19 of Mark Trex Jr. trying to use that draft down the straightaways to close in on some of their competitors ahead of them like Jimmy Johnson. Well, let's try Martin's radio again. It's pretty tight again. Tempo, we see it. It's just all that traffic, I used it up. Yeah, and what Mark Jerks Jr. is talking about, he needs track position in clean air. They need to have a really great stop or do something on a green flag stop to, in order to leap ahead of some of these other cars so he can have clean air because he's just he has a very good race car, but he's using it all up, using those tires up and hurting the balance because he's having to race them so hard. Well, Truex has rebounded to fourth. Here are his teammates, Hamlin and Kyle Busch, seventh and eighth. Ryan Blaney has that MVP look about him today. You know, we talk about it being Jimmy Johnson's home track. And Blaney, who came a whisker away from winning the Daytona 500 and was in contention to win 
when cautions fell the other way last week at Las Vegas. Look at him stretch it out over Alex Bowman by two and a half. Well, we've talked about it over the offseason, that change with Penske Racing, switching some crew chiefs around. You know, which one of these driver and crew chief combinations was going to work the best? Even though Joey Logano won the race last week with Paul Wolf as his crew chief this year, his old crew chief, Todd Gordon, right now I think the chemistry is very strong between him and Blaney. Four laps to go in stage two, Matt. Keselowski back up into the fourth position, but a few moments ago when the 19 of Truex passed him for that spot, he came on the radio and said, I was wide open and he drove just right by me. So a little bit of shock and consternation for Keselowski. He was cautiously optimistic about their chances today. Thought they might have been a little lacking in the speed department, not showing it right now. Well, he's closed right up on Jimmy Johnson for third. With Truex in tow, they are single file as we wind down to the end of stage two. Yeah, the one that right now isn't showing speed that did at the, this restart, last restart was Joey Logano. He was up there with the top five. He's all the way down in 15th position now, but his teammates are still very, very competitive towards the front. Something we've seen out of Truex Jr. is they don't always qualify good. I think they have a little more drag and some downforce in their cars. That's why they don't qualify as good, but they usually race extremely good. And I think that was the thing about Mark Truex Jr.'s comments when the two of Brad Keselowski went by him. It's it's that he's holding it wide open. He just doesn't have the sheer speed like some of these other cars. Look at Jimmy Johnson from our ally cam trying to hold on to third place in this stage from Brad Keselowski. Two to go. Every position you lose on the track in these closing laps of the stage is another opportunity to lose more on pit road. You want to be as far to the front as you possibly can so you can have a great pit stop and maybe even get clean air and come out on fr out front. Kyle Busch trying to pass Denny Hamlin. Teammates battling for seventh. Final lap of the stage, Kevin Harvick in position to get the final stage point. About half a second ahead of Tyler Reddick. Alex Bowman won the first stage, but not by the 3.2 seconds that Ryan Blaney has on the field. Yeah, Blaney just looks totally in control. The car nice and straight, not hanging it out there. Doing an awesome job. Ryan Blaney and Team Penske win stage two by 3.2 seconds. First stage win of the year for Blaney. Ahead of Bowman, Johnson, Keslowski, and Truex. Ryan Blaney, stage two winner.
This week on Friday night's number one show, the road to WrestleMania heats up. Bray Wyatt reacts to the Fiends match against the legend John Cena at WrestleMania. All that and more from Buffalo Friday night SmackDown, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Let's get a little smack about what we're going to see here on Pit Stops. Regan. Well, the 11 car, Denny Hamlin, continues his progression to the front. Hit a little bit of a wall right here, though. This race car is too tight from the center exit. He needs to fix that area of the corner. Vince? Well, after having a dominant car at times last week, Chase Elliott, after leading the most laps, winning stage one and stage two last week, they've been pretty good again this week, but a little too heavy on that right front. So for the first time today, they're going to make a chassis adjustment on that nine. Otherwise, he likes it. He's been up around the top five all day. Jamie? Alex Bowman in the 88 has had a rocket ship since they unloaded on Friday. Minimal changes throughout the weekend, and that has been the story today. He's led 47 laps. He doesn't want any changes now. Just air pressure. Matt, they're coming to you. Ryan Bellaney just playing with him, showing his presence with authority. Now, he had closed it up to about three tenths, got the debris off the grill, opened it back up to three seconds plus. The car a little bit free on exit at turn two and turn four. All right, pit road, a busy place. And everybody going for four tires due to the abrasive nature of this racetrack. Tires trump track position. So you lead away there. Alex Bowman getting service. Jimmy Johnson, remember that crew uh, was really excited about the stop they had the last time. He's got a straight shot off of pit road. Oh, they missed their adjustment with the tape, but they're going to win the battle off the end of pit road. Ram sponsors our race off pit road. Johnson plus two with four tires. Blaney down two spots and Kevin Harvick picks up five. You can see that tire care in the front trying to pull the tape off, put a little tape on that nose, gives it a little bit more downforce and as well as takes a little drag off the car. But what do you say we uh, dial up our stage two winner, Ryan Blaney? Hey, Ryan, this is Mike and Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, Jeff, I got you. Well, buddy, congratulations uh, on that stage two win, man. That was a strong run. Y you guys are just off to a great start of this season. You and Todd Gordon seem to be really clicking right now. Love the tribute to, to Kobe and those that were lost in that tragic accident. Uh, tell us about this final stage. How are you going to win this race? Well, I think we just, uh, we've gotten our car better than we run, it seems like. So I think we'll keep working. Work in that direction. Uh, I still don't think our car is perfect. We can definitely get it better. And, you know, there's a handful of guys that seem to be getting better too. So I think just staying on top of things is the big part of it. Um, Todd's done a great job all day of making adjustments. It's just a matter of keeping up with the racetrack. All right, man. Well, thanks for talking to us. Tighten up those belts. This uh, restart's going to be a fun one. No, uh, they've been fun for sure. Hopefully, you guys enjoy watching. Thank you. Ryan Blaney spent about 20 minutes with Kobe Bryant a couple of years ago, was just amazed at Kobe's detailed interest in our sport.
125 laps complete, 75 to go in Southern California. Let's check in with the studio for a Wendy's race break. Thank you so much, Mike. Of course, Ryan Blaney leading the field at the end of stage one. Let's talk about the team that led the field to green, though, Stuart Haas Racing. Clint Boyer starting the day in that pole position. He had that tire issue in stage two. You also have Kevin Harvick, who started fifth on the day with that pit stop. He's back in the top five. Cole Custer has not shown speed all weekend. Eric Almarola did show some speed. He was in the top 10 for most of stage one, but he has fallen out. What have you seen out of Stuart Haas Racing, Jamie? Well, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Kevin Harvick, right from the get-go, was complaining about his car that he didn't think it handled well. And then our pole setter, Clinton Boyer, you know, we talked about the balance between being fast in qualifying and being fast in the race, and they have missed that again today, Larry. And they continue to make major adjustments at every pit stop. The problem is we may be down to only one more pit stop, and it may be things they built into that car that adjustment on pit stop's not going to fix it. We saw some race moves from Kevin Harvick. We'll see how stage three goes. Let's go back out to California, but don't forget Wendy's breakfast is now available nationwide every morning, Mike. Thanks, Shannon. On the stage break, Kyle Larson gets the free pass, so he is back on the lead lap and will restart 27. And keep an eye on this outside lane. It just seems to me like the outside lane is the preferred lane on these restarts. And you have some teammates that are going to line up in those Toyotas with Truex, Kyle Busch, and Denny Hamlin on that outside lane. So a lot of pushing going on there. Yeah, the Toyotas, help them. excuse me, the Toyotas will restart fourth, sixth, eighth, and ninth. Chevy front row, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman, here they come to the Geico restart zone. Pace car makes that hard left. And we're ready for stage three. Well, in that time, the inside lane because of Ryan Blaney, a huge push to the rear bumper of Alex Bowman gives him the lead coming into turn three. Four wide. <laughs> of course, Legato taking that dive all the way down the white line. Well, Jimmy Johnson might get to the outside corner of the 88, and here comes the, to the inside Ryan Blaney on Alex Bowman. Behind the 88, if you want it, bottom of three, bottom of three. They're pulling each other back, so bottom of three is even. And here comes oh, Truex. Oh, Truex. Four wide. Corner, corner, corner. You saw that Bowman side drafted on Jimmy Johnson, dumped that air in the rear spoiler, and that really drug him back. That gave that opening on the outside for Truex to take the lead. Boy, great battle. Here comes Ryan Blaney now being pushed by Denny Hamlin to the lead. But Bowman just cannot get through turns three and four to maintain this lead. He gets stalled up every time, whether they're on the inside or the outside. And Bowman leads them to the stripe this time. Truex has a run. He's going to take it downstairs. Oh, all the way to the bottom, three wide. Can he slide up in front of the 12 of Ryan Blaney and maintain this lead? There you go. Put him in your way now. Keeping behind you there. And look who's fifth. Tyler, Tyler Reddick. With a huge push from the 18 of Kyle Busch right now. He has been phenomenal in these restarts all day long. For the lead, Blaney inside of Truex. Bowman looks up high. Yeah, and this will be advantage to Truex because Bowman's going to give a push to the 19. Well, I almost wonder if Bowman couldn't have taken them three wide to take the lead right there. I think right now Bowman's thinking, I need to shuffle out this 12 car Ryan Blaney. He's been so strong up front. But that's a tough choice because now you have Martin Truex Jr. up front. Larry, this third stage is 20 laps longer than either of the other two. If you try to split this stage in half, are you asking a lot of your tires? No, I think that's exactly what they'll do, Mike. We went back racing with 73 laps to go, so what they'll do, they should break it. Should we not have a caution? About 36 laps a run, so we'll probably pit somewhere around one lap 160 to 165, which is, again, you know, call it 35, 40 to go. 
Hamlin Truex. Joe Gibbs teammates battling Alex Bowman right in amongst them. Well, it's just it's such a tough decision to make as a driver. You get these big runs and you want to get to the outside, but you don't want to be locked side by side with anybody because it just opens up the door for the car behind you. Remember, both of those Toyotas started this race in the rear. As they battle, watch the 24 of William Byron come into picture here. Yeah, he thought about going to the outside of Logano. Logano had to check up. He slid. Oh, wow. The 20 of Eric Jones made a little contact with the left rear of the 24 on Byron. Turn him sideways. What a save. All that happening back around 17th spot. And Bowman out front in the lead on Mark Church Jr. Can he hold him off now? Alex Bowman trying to do what the Chevrolets and the Fords had little luck doing last year, holding off the Toyotas, which won more than half the races last season. Well, oh. and, and we, we talked you know, all weekend long. Yeah, the Toyotas haven't shown a lot of speed. Oh, they're struggling. Well, guess what? They're second, third, and fourth right now. Sixty seven laps to go. Alex Bowman out in front. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing on Fox, brought to you by NASCAR's premier partners. 63, make it 62 laps to go now at Auto Club Speedway. Alex Bowman out in front of Martin Truex by 1.4 seconds. Jimmy Johnson, another eight tenths back. And Martin Truex 
gave up the lead intentionally. Why? Well, he had a huge piece of debris on the nose. As you see right there, that's blocking all the airflow to that radiator, causing the water temp to skyrocket. I'm pretty sure right here going into turn one, he probably waved the 88 of Bowman to the inside. Not that he could have held off Bowman anyway. He's very strong right now, but I believe he did wave him to the inside. And as they came off turn two, whew, that piece of debris flew right off the nose of the number 19. Jones, Kozlowski, Almirola here fighting for 11th. And uh, let's show you one of Ryan Blaney's moves here from the last two minutes. Well, we've seen a lot of aggressive driving from all these guys trying to gain positions. And you see Ryan Blaney got a run into turn one. He dove to the bottom. Well, this is how strong Ryan Blaney's car is that he was able to make that pass. So not only the eight of Tyler Reddick, but slide up in the front, in front of the, the 18 of Kyle Busch as Kyle Busch gives him a little hello down the back straightaway. Whoa. Yeah, so what Ryan Blaney's alluding to, he's locked in on these lower pressures of where he can maneuver his car because he's really on the splitter hard. As those pressures build up, it gets off that front splitter, but probably not able to be as aggressive as he really wants to on the restarts. Denny Hamlin has been in the wall. Uh-oh. We've seen, we saw this yesterday by Kyle Busch in practice in turns three and four where he brushed the wall after hitting a bump. Here's a look at it. Hamlin was fourth. Blaney had just passed him. You see, oh, you saw where, yeah, Denny got a little bit loose, probably trying to jump back to the throttle to keep Blaney from getting by him. And he gets a little bit high, just brushes the wall. Now you got to keep an eye on those right sides because if there's too much damage, we've seen how quickly they can cut the tires down. Hamlin holding sixth against Kevin Harvick. Here comes Kurt Busch. How about Harvick, Jamie? Yeah, how about him? What a comeback. Remember in the first stage, he was basically saying that car would not do anything. It was junk. They couldn't fix it. And he was mired way mid-pack. And now they have worked on that car, made air pressure adjustments, and he's saying that the car is just getting better. And by the way, tip of the hat to his pit crew. They gained him five spots on that last pit stop. And you see him now battling up there for the top five. Vince? Well, and just ahead of Harvick is the nine of Chase Elliott. And, Jamie, you're talking about Harvick's crew gaining him stop spots on pit road. Elliott lost six spots on his last pit stop when they made that chassis adjustment. Very slow, so it's set him back into the 12th position. He's slowly starting to work his way up, and he has a car that gets better the longer they run. So he's hoping that those spots come back to him quickly as his car gets better. Side by side with Kurt Busch and Hamlin. This battle for sixth place. And uh, how about Kurt Busch rebounding from missing his pit stall. He had to come around and come back in restart tail end. And he is up to sixth place. Yeah this is a great track for Kurt Busch. He really has won run well here been consistent. He's won here in the past looked really good in practice that set him back a lot. So it's so tough if you lose track position after that second run or so it's so much harder to gain those spots back because now you've got cars that are up for ooh, got Denny Hamlin looks like he got to the rear bumper of the nine of Chase Elliott and got him sideways right there we, we already saw what happens when Denny Hamlin pushes you down the straightaway Kyle Larson can allude to that Kurt Busch going to slide in there and that gap between Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin Great battle here, sixth through ninth with 56 laps to go. Big day for Jimmy Johnson. He was honored here, has been honored all weekend. His wife and daughters waved the green flag to start this race. His final race at his home racetrack of a storied seven championship cup career.
Welcome back to the Auto Club 400 on Fox. 52 laps to go. Alex Bowman out front. Time for today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Jeff. Well, Mike, I think this is a very important season for Alex Bowman, Hendrick Motorsports, and for that Chevrolet Camaro. Already more than 60 laps led here today. He just wants to leave that last one to get the win today. Jeff, Kyle Busch has had not much to celebrate in the Cup Series since hoisting the trophy, the championship trophy at Homestead last November. Best finish of 15th. They just keep chipping away with that 18 car, and with one more trip to pit road, don't count old Rowdy out. Spotter Clayton Hughes has delivered a lot of messages today. Truex would love to deliver the biggest one, and that score the trophy. Remember, it started at the back, all the way to the front. He bounces back and forth between tight and loose, I think Truex scores his second win here at Auto Club Speedway. Guys, I'm keeping my eye on Kurt Busch. He qualified fourth, but he missed his pit stall earlier in the race. Jeff Gordon just came on a little bit ago and talked about how he's all the way back up to seventh. I thought he had one of the best cars in practice. Keep your eye on Kurt. Can seven-time cup champion Jimmy Johnson win his seventh Auto Club Speedway race today? My head says Ryan Blaney. My heart says 48. And that's your Credit One Bank ones to watch. With now 50 laps to go. And Alex Bowman in front of Martin Truex by 3.6 seconds. Boy, this place hasn't gotten any smoother no, since we started has. Friday, has it? I mean, and these, these teams run these cars so stiff with the springs and the shocks to get the platform and get the, the drag and downforce where they want it. And you see and feel every one of those bumps throughout this race. So these guys are going to be pretty sore tomorrow. And thanks for Jimmy Johnson for carrying our Fox visor cam and putting you right there in the cockpit with him. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, you got to drive this track, Mike. And we saw right there with Jimmy Johnson, every single lap, you're sliding either the front or the back of the car as you're maneuvering through traffic. The restarts are wild, multiple grooves. I mean, this place is fun. Speaking of fun, that is Michael Waltrip's middle name. Yeah, I've got on my helmet cam too here. I've got my uh, hat cam, but I tell you, I'm on the pit road suites, and this is a great way to consume a race. You can slip downstairs and get a hot slice of pizza or a cold beer, or come up here on the roof and check out the action in front of you. But I'll tell you the only problem with this is, the racing has been so intense, my neck hurts and I'm dizzy from going there to there, watching the cars come off turn two and down the back. What a great view, what a great facility. I'm loving this day. Thanks, Michael.
nobody making any inroads on Alex Bowman except his teammate Chase Elliott and Kurt Busch maybe Kevin Harvick those are the only cars that were quicker than Bowman on this last lap. Yeah as we ride on board here with Kyle Larson who had some issues earlier but doing a nice job you know, kind of trying to make something out of this day even though he has damage to the car and got caught up in a, an incident earlier but yeah Mike back to your point if if Chase Elliott or Kurt Busch can get some uh, some track position maybe even a Denny Hamlin they're fast they're very fast. A little debris on the nose of Chase Elliott. Kyle Busch in fifth place with our Toyota cam. And uh, we'll use this driver shot to show you just how bumpy this old country road is. Yeah, I mean, think about doing that for 200 laps and your body your spine everything feels that not only does it make it a little bit hard to keep the maximum amount of grip in the car and want to push the car to the limit but it also is really hard on your neck and your body throughout the whole day. Yeah and these seats aren't padded like the ones in your hot rod Camaro. Not at all. It is a stiff. It, it's built for protection and performance. It's definitely not built for comfort. Larry. So guys as far as a fuel window it is open right now with 45 laps to go but I talked about maybe split this stage in half and going maybe to about 37 or 36 to go I think it'll be a chess match who's going to make the commitment first I think somewhere maybe about 40 laps to go you may see them some of them start to peel off if they want to get the jump on Alex Bowman in that 88. All right John Hunter Nemechek has just made his pit stop under green. Green flag pit stops coming up. You're watching Fox NASCAR. Forty two laps to go in Fontana aerial coverage provided by Goodyear chase the possibilities unlock discovery at every turn Goodyear more driven. Eric Jones Jimmy Johnson and Chase Elliott on pit road Vince. Well for Chase Elliott he just told Alan Gustafson he said I'm not bad I'm just not good enough so they're going to make another air pressure adjustment to try to get him a little bit more freedom on that right front and a late chassis adjustment as well Matt. 
Bowman and Johnson, very similar in chassis setup. Johnson says the car is still a little floaty. Wants another adjustment, still too tight this run like the previous run. Meanwhile, the 19 of Martin Truex, he was concerned about what lane the, the 88 was running. You can see the 18 also on pit road. Truex says his car more on the free side. Needs a, a bigger adjustment this time, Regan. Well, Danny Hamlin's race car has been getting better most of the day until he brushed the fence a few laps ago. As soon as he did that, that race car went too tight. Four tires for him. Jamie? Kevin Harvick in the force that balances okay right now. A little bit too tight on exit. A four-tire stop. Air pressure once again. Matt? And the 19, they're back on the left side. Their teammate, the 18, Kyle Busch is in, and he's already down and away, losing a lot of time here on the 19. They cannot get... The luck's off on that left rear. Huge, huge bad luck here for the 19, Jamie. Impact gun issues. Tough break for the 19 indeed. And the leader, Alex Bowman, was getting anxious on the radio, saying he was just too tight turning. The tires were falling off too much. But Greg Ives, his crew chief, wanted him to go about 38 laps. They accomplished that here. They'll fill him up in air pressure. Matt, back to you. And probably the most dominant car all day, the 12 of Ryan Blaney trying to get Roger Penske another win at the racetrack that he built. The car has gone to the free side. You heard him earlier say it was too tight to run the bottom, adding tape and another adjustment for the 12. Four drivers have not stopped at the front of the field. Keselowski, Busher, Stenhouse, of course, and Boyer. When we cycle back around, it'll be Bowman to the lead over Blaney. Well, it's not really unfortunate with Truex Jr. and that issue that they had, but I was really curious to watch Alex Bowman come to pit road. Let's look at this 19 pit stop first. You can see he's having an issue with the gun. Jeff, he had the same problem on the right rear. They were having gun problems it's right like there. like he couldn't get it to reverse. He could get him to, the, the lug nuts to turn and tighten, but he couldn't get it to reverse and pull those lug nuts off. And here is the radio for Team 19. Your fault. What's going on? What was that? What the hell happened? Uh, I'm not too sure right now. Something with the gum. I think laser. So Truex goes a lap down. Is that a medical issue? It looks like he something is wrong with his hand, that he hurt his hand and wasn't able to switch the gun around from tightening to loosening lug nuts. You can see him looking at his hand. Might have caught a finger, uh, Larry. Those those guns, air guns, they have a lot of torque to them. Oh, they they really, really do. But I agree with you guys. With him holding his hand like that, something happened over there. It all started on the right rear, and he just escalated to the left rear, Matt. And Lee Cunningham is going to be taken to the Infield Care Center, veteran tire changer here in the sport. You guys mentioned the injury to his wrist and hand. Medical personnel are looking things over on Cunningham. Jamie. Well, I mentioned, Matt, that Alex Bowman was getting anxious that the, the tires were falling off. This is the right rear tire that just came off the 88. Look at the cords right here. He's happy to get those fre four fresh tires, guys. Happy? He's happy. happy. He'll be delirious if he sees that. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and I was going to go back. I was very anxious to see how Alex Bowman handled entering pit road. We saw him lock up tires, being very aggressive to that pit road entry earlier. That time, he actually lost some time to... Uh, uh, Ryan Blaney, who was behind him, who was very aggressive, but they had really nice pit stops, and he was able to get off pit road before Ryan Blaney. So now it's Keselowski and Boyer on the long run strategy. They've not been on pit road since lap 123. Everyone else has just stopped. All right, guys, you know my theory. If you follow the leader, guess what you'll do? You'll follow the leader. So it appears to me what Jeremy Bullins is doing with Brad Kozlowski in the two and Johnny Klausmeyer in the 14, they know they did not have race winning cars. But you see they're hitting on pit road right now. What they were doing, they were hedging their bet, hoping they could catch a caution before they made their trip to pit road. So when they come in, it'll cycle the lead back to Alex Bowman and he will have about three seconds. He is now the leader as that, he passes Clint Boyer. That's how big of a difference it is between new tires and old tires that Clint Boyer had. 
So Bowman back to the lead. Boyer stays on track in second. Blaney will be third and Kyle Busch fourth. 34 laps to go. Let's go Fox side by side. Thirty one laps to go in Southern California. Here's a look at today's USAA biggest movers since the last restart Ross Chastain up ten substituting for Ryan Newman uh, who paid a visit to the Roush Fenway shop this week gathered everybody together thanked them for building him a good safe race car uh, did a little sponsor video while he was there and continues his recovery. Still no timetable for his return. And Chastain took some time with the media. Uh, they asked him, hey, were you hard on yourself last week? And he said, yes, absolutely. He says, because I expect more of myself than we got, but I'm really happy to have this opportunity, and I'm going to make the most of it. Vince? Well, and he's probably going to be disappointed with himself again after this race because on a previous pit stop, not the most recent one, but the one before that, he missed coming into the box and got the car too close to the wall, and it was really tough on the jack man to get the car up, and they lost several positions there. All things considered, though, Chastain's done a great job, and the crew chief, Scott Graves, told me they've been really pleased with the job Ross has done, and as far as the car is concerned, it's continually gotten better throughout the course of the day. He's been an able substitute for sure, Mike. He sure has as Jimmy Johnson moves past teammate Chase Elliott for fourth. Uh, Ryan Newman and Roush Fenway have been busy on Twitter about his recovery. There he is in the shop and addressing everybody. Getting a standing ovation after a brief hospital stay following a horrific crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500. Again, we wish Ryan Newman a speedy recovery and Ross Chastain doing a Admirable job as a fill-in currently in 16th. Yeah, no, Ross is definitely doing a good job. Yeah, I want to shout out to Ryan Newman and get well soon, man, and can't wait to get you back here to the racetrack soon. Riding with uh, Eric Almarola, Kevin Harvick. They are 8th and 9th. As you look back from the Ford onboard camera, and this battle won't quit for 4th no, place. No, it won't. <laughs> can't tell. Who's wanting to uh, hold off the other the most right here? You got three Chevrolets together, but you know, the 48, I believe, came off pit road before the nine of Chase Elliott, and then they swapped positions, and now they've swapped them again. Now Kurt Busch wants to play. Fourth, fifth, and sixth place here. 
And let's get a further update on the uh, Martin Truex crew, Matt. Mike, I had an opportunity to talk to Lee Cunningham before he walked himself to the infield care center. He said that he feels fine. The problem is that his uh, his arm started to cramp up. And so that's why he had all the issues between the wrist and going up the forearm, and it just totally locked right up. That's what you were seeing the issues when he was trying to get that left rear out and off. You know, everybody thinks that changing tires it just happens so fast that these guys aren't athletes. These guys are incredible athletes, and there's a lot of conditioning goes into it. But you've got to make sure that you have yourself prepared throughout this whole day, too, with hydration. Just like we talk about that with the drivers when it's a hot day, those guys have to be loose, limber, and hydrated down there to prevent something like a cramp happening also. So you saw his replacement getting suited up there. Even though NASCAR has reduced the number of traveling crew this year, uh, these teams always have reserves in place and ready to go should somebody need relief as we saw. Jimmy Johnson almost needed some relief right Ooh, there. We wow. saw some great racing, some close action between teammates. The 9 of Chase Zilli getting right to the rear bumper of the uh, 48 of Jimmy Johnson. While all that happened, Kurt Busch was able to go right by him, but here comes Chase Elliott back. And we have seen some great racing. Just so hard to break away from somebody Oh, Kurt Busch not going to give it up. Nope. Chase got a little side sniff uh, uh, off of Kurt Busch's left side, allowed him to pull ahead of car length. And but Chase, not was, clear him. Chase was hoping to clear and get up in front of Kurt Busch right there, not able to do it. This battle not over. A little more side drafting coming. This should allow Chase Elliott to clear Kurt Busch. But now he's got to dive up in front of him. Oh, Kurt Busch had to check up right there. The problem, Jeff, is they are losing about three or four tenths of a second a lap to the leader while they battle. Kurt Busch easily could have gone to the inside and tried to make that pass on Chase Elliott, but he knew they were losing that valuable time that you mentioned, Mike, and he chose to just get to his rear bumper, try to push him down the straightaway and try to make up some of that ground that was lost. Ty Dillon just ahead is one lap down in the 13. Michael McDowell in the free pass position in 23rd, the first car one lap down. Dylan 25th. You don't like what you're seeing here. Well, I just, I think Chase Elliott could have run a higher lane. Kurt Busch had the advantage by watching and seeing what lane the nine was going to choose and went right around him on the outside. Well, so that you and we and everybody at home doesn't miss a minute of this. We're going to go Fox side by side with 23 to go.
Here's your progressive race summary with 20 laps to go. Alex Bowman's your leader. One of eight different leaders. 16 lead changes. 22 cars on the lead lap. Three caution flags so far. Tonight on FS1, Diego Valeri leads the Portland Timbers against Minnesota United. It's the season kickoff at 7 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Alex Bowman has a lead here of five seconds with 19 to play. Yeah, and I'm going to bring Jamie McMurray in on this conversation, too, because this is making me a little bit nervous. We saw the right rear tire down to the cords on Alex Bowman on that last pit stop. We've heard that they've told Alex Bowman about that issue. He was losing valuable time. He's going to have to go even longer this time, yet he's been extending this lead. Jamie, what do you do if you're Alex Bowman? Well, look, I, I, if I were Greg Ives, I would be telling Alex to slow down. We've been watching him. I mean, every lap, he is the fastest car. He's got up to a five-second lead, which is a pretty big lead here. It, uh, you know, it's all about tire management. We've talked about that. And we haven't seen tire troubles, but we've seen tires worn out. And if he gets in that same position, Jeff, that he was in last time, he was losing a half to three-quarters of a second a lap when that tire started to go down to the courts. Now, last time by, Ryan Blaney was a quarter-second quicker than Bowman. And uh, Martin Truex trying to rebound from trouble on that pit stop at eighth place. And here's what happened. Whoa, we, we've seen these guys battling it all day long. The 19 of Truex Jr. and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And then Eric Almirola taking advantage of it. Tries to go the outside of Truex. But boy, that was a that was a close moment between Hamlin and Truex. And this battle's still not over yet. There's going to be a lot of frustrations in that Monday morning meeting over there at JGR. 17 laps to go, Larry. Looks like it's trend time. <laughs> well, it is, Mike. I know we've only had one caution outside of the two stage ends, and that was for Clint Boyer when he lost that left front tire. What I did, I went back and I looked at the last nine races at Auto Club. The reason the last nine, that's when we went to 400 miles. And the average of the last caution, we're almost right there, lap 185 with 15 to go, five times out of those nine in the final five laps, and we have had four overtime finishes in those nine races. Well, if I'm Alex Bowman, I don't know if I want to see that caution Larry's uh, calling for or not. He's got a good lead, but if there was a caution, he could get new tires. Meanwhile, what was this? It was almost caution. <laughs> oh, man. See, Keselowski diving from the top. He sees the 11 of Hamlin sliding up in front of him, losing momentum, and he just turned left. I mean, they almost made contact right there. That, that, that could have been pretty big. Now, should caution wave, there are 21 lead lap cars. So if Bowman came to get tires, probably half or more of that group might stay out. Yeah, and when you have, I don't care if you have four, two laps on the tires, new tires make a huge difference here at this racetrack. And because it's so wide, you can make something out of those fresh tires and that extra speed. I got an idea, Mike. You can stay out. We're all coming to get four fresh tires. <laughs> this is the one time Larry Mack agrees with us drivers that, okay, boys, I'm going to give up that track position, give you some fresh rubber. I'm with you, but look at some of the names that are on the lead lap with just 14 to go here. Rookies like Tyler Reddick, uh, Cole Custer, Ross Chastain, Chris Buescher. Ricky Stenhouse is going to lap down just now, along with Kyle Larson. Not a factor at this moment, but I've got to think there are a couple that would roll the dice and at least make things interesting. Well, and, and just like you know, we have seen in the past, those cautions breed cautions. So you might not have to go all the way to the finish if it's a late caution. You might just need to cross that white finish, uh, the start finish line on the white flag. Nice run for Reddick today, the two-time Xfinity champ, running 13th for Richard Childress. As Alex Bowman continues to hold a lead of almost five seconds. Blaney for a while was eating into that margin, and now it has not changed a tenth of a second over the last four or five laps. Yeah, I, I, if I had to guess, Mike, he's just trying to maintain that right now. The last thing that they want is that caution to come out or have a tire issue, and but he's got a nice gap. It helps him in traffic. He can navigate through him, not have to push the issue. I think the guy that's pushing the issue right now is Ryan Blaney. He needs to get up there, put some pressure on Bowman, 
Newman to try to push that right rear a little bit. I'd be telling my driver right now, hey, Ryan, the 88 had an issue with their right rear tire. Go push him to try to slide. So he's sliding that car, abusing that right rear tire. Very little attrition, only one car out of the race. Christopher Bell with engine trouble. Eighth place here. Almirola and Hamlin. And a bit of a frustrating day for Denny Hamlin. Tell him when he hangs on our right rear, it gets tight. You don't care about that, bud. Yeah, you just got to do you, man. You race for the 11 car. Yeah, so, you know, when these cars are getting position around you, it changes the balance of the car because it changes the aerodynamics. So sometimes when you get to that right rear, it actually pulls the nose of the car and will actually turn the nose into the wall. Once you get a little bit further ahead to the door, now it starts to loosen the car up because it's pulling the air off the rear spoiler. Now the question is, who was he talking about that was doing uh -huh. that? Right. Almirola in eighth place going past uh, Clint Boyer who is now a lap down after cutting down a tire earlier and bringing out the only caution for cause in this race aside from the stage brakes. Yeah and, and not only did he have that tire go down but it ground the whole front splitter off the car which is really going to hurt the performance of that car. So ever since that happened he really had no chance. He was fading a little bit anyway but after that he really had no chance of fully recovering and getting that car up to speed. And Joey Logano, last week's winner, restarted 13th, currently 14th. Now, I'm a little surprised by this because we've seen where Penske's been fast today. We've seen it out of Brad Keselowski. We've seen it out of the 12 with Ryan Blaney. We saw it at times at Joey Logano, and even in his uh, at practice sessions, I thought his car looked like it was really good in the long runs. Now, I'm telling you, if the caution comes out, don't count this guy out, though. He's really aggressive on restarts. Alex Bowman is our leader and Jamie he's increased that lead by half a second over the last eight laps or so. What an impressive run for the 88 Mike. I mean here's a guy what a long story it has taken kind of a sad story to get all the way here to Hendrick Motorsports thanks to Dale Earnhardt Jr. who touted him highly making Dale Jr. proud today. Alex has now led over 100 laps today looking for not just his first win at Auto Club Speedway guys but his first ever top 10 as well in 2015 at age 22 the Tucson native said the reality of it is I'm probably never going to get a call from Rick Hendrick never say never never say never it's all worked out well for Alex Bowman well and they you know Greg Ives and this team of engineers at Hendrick Motorsports have been working really hard on their mile and a half program and you know this is sort of in that that even though it's a two mile racetrack it's sort of in that 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 area of what you work on on your race car for performance and boy did they improve they were one of the best cars on those tracks last year and they're following that up this year here at Auto Club Speedway a track that's not really been Alex Bowman's best. Blaney has now drifted to 6.4 seconds back of the leader Matt. Mike at, at this point Ryan Blaney is just trying to hold on to lock in that P2 position. Earlier in the race he had a vibration but it was right before the stage. He's telling the team he's got a vibration again concerned that he's courting that tire. He's hoping to survive. Yeah, and that might be why he's not able to push the issue like I was talking about because he now has a concern and, and a lot of times when you leave pit road and you're in a battle for the lead that could possibly turn into the win you're pushing the car as hard as you possibly can and I think that may have had caused an issue with the tires on Ryan Blaney's car. So in this run with now just seven laps to go and Jimmy Johnson trying to hold on to sixth against Brad Keselowski. These drivers are asking these set of tires to last from three to six laps longer than in the stint that started this third stage and yet still maintain competitive and try to win this race. And how do you grind those tires as you see the crossover here by Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski not giving up this spot easily. Looks like Brad's got a little bit stronger race car than Jimmy does right now. But these long uh, abrasive corners uh, this surface is so abrasive that you're in the corner so long sliding grinding those tires 
down, there's not a lot you can do other than just back up the pace, but the setup of the car also plays a big factor in wearing those tires out. Well, bad news for Blaney, the Bush brothers are coming. Kyle just passed Kurt, and they are both running their last lap at between seven tenths and a full second quicker than Blaney. They might catch him with about two to go. And again, like you said, Mike, this race is not over till it's over with even Bowman having to carry a little bit, a few more laps than he did that last time. Got to make sure that he doesn't have an issue in the closing laps. Chase Elliott in fifth, running about the same pace as his teammate Bowman, much faster than Blaney, not quite as quick as the Bush brothers. Eric Almirola in eighth has been battling Denny Hamlin to hold that spot. Yeah, that's how you don't save the tires. Right. When you're battling with somebody working as hard as Eric Almirola has, they've been side by side swapping positions. That's using the tires up. We hear it. An issue for the 12 going to come to pit road. Ryan Blaney, if he pits, he will give up second place. Ah, oh, bummer. Such a bummer for Ryan Blaney. Off to a great start. Great day he's having here today. And he will pit Jeff with three laps to go. Safety first. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely safety first. You don't want to tear up the race car and make things even worse. But you also, he is our points leader coming in this race. He wants to maintain those points as much as possible. You see that, that maybe that right rear tires may be uh, unwound one of the, the treads there, one of the cords. Now he may be able to stay on the lead lap given his track position at the time he came in. Three to go. Cole Custer was the last car on the lead lap. Now he is lapped by Alex Bowman who will come to the stripe with two to go. So Blaney falls off the lead lap. That'll put him down around 23rd place. 22nd or so with two to go. And now Kyle Busch the new second place car. 10 seconds back of Bowman. And half a second faster. I, I would call this a win for Kyle Busch. He has not had a lot of speed this weekend. He would be very happy to be, come home second today. Well, I say that we know Kyle's never happy with second. Here comes Bowman. The white flag waves. One to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Alec, uh, Al Austin Dillon to the pit lane for tires with one to go. Kyle Busch 9.7 back and closing as fast as he can. You know, this is one of those drivers. He doesn't have this long term contract at Hendrick Motorsports. His future's a little bit unknown. This moment right here, if he can complete this, which it looks like he will, a huge moment for Alex Bowman's career and future and this season that he and Greg Ives and Hendrick Motorsports are starting to put together. Alex Bowman comes to the stripe to win the Auto Club 400. Career win number two. Some emotion. You hear emotion out of the driver, Alex Bowman, and you saw the emotion right there, Greg Ives. Three wide to the line, Al Marola, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin gets the spot, seven time finishes, seven. <laughs> it's on the numbers. Gave us quite a show though today. Yeah, he did, showed some, some great moments today. 17 drivers back to Ross Chastain finish on the lead lap here at Auto Club Speedway. That was a total team effort. Alex did a great job. The car was fast, but that last pit stop was also a great stop to get him off pit road, give him a little bit of gap back to those competitors behind Alex Bowman. You see these guys celebrating. I think we saw Alex's dad in the picture there as well. This track was built by Roger Penske, much like Michigan International Speedway, and thus Victory Lane is right out here 
for the fans to all see. Pretty sure those tires are not going to come back in one piece to victory well, lane when he gets there. <laughs> we'll never know if they were worn to the cord, Jeff, because they sure are now. <laughs> there it goes. Bam. <laughs> He was fast all weekend. He was on everybody's radar. A lot of drivers called him the car to beat after practice and of course qualifying. And here he is. Career win number two for Tucson Arizona's Alex Bowman. Pulls off the helmet, Hans device. This guy's got to be excited. Cow, Matt Yoakum. <laughs> how about that? No debate on that right rear now. No, no. Greg said save it, so I used it. I <laughs> I saved some to use some there. But man, how about that, California? Um, I grew up quarter midget racing, maybe 20 minutes from here, Pomona Valley. Uh, went there every week. Made a lot of great friends. I know a lot of you guys are here, so. Um, man, so cool for Cincinnati. Seems like every time they're on the car, we run so good. Um, promised my buddy Aaron we would all get uh, matching 88 tattoos if I won. And I think I have to go get a tattoo now. Um, but that'll be a good time. So uh, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks to Greg, all the guys. He made good calls all day and uh, we we're up front when it counted. This win is huge for so many reasons. The first one is always special, but the second one is a statement because it proves the first one wasn't a fluke. And you guys certainly proved that today, dominating. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, the first one, that was a really enjoyable experience. Um, and then we sucked for six months. So, um, you know, we started this year so strong. Um, I feel like I've, I've got a lot on, on my side that's that I'm doing better. My life's kind of a lot more organized than it was back then. And um, Greg and all the guys, they're just on point. I mean, we've unloaded the last two weeks. I don't think we've got a change in the race car from how it came off the truck. So um, that makes my job a heck of a lot easier. And I'm just so proud of this team, Hendrick Motorsports, Hendrick Horsepower, uh, under the hood, the whole shop back home. They work their butts off. We uh, put a lot of effort in this new car and it's obviously working out really well. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your people. Alex Bowman today's winner the Bush brothers second and third Chase Elliott fourth Brad Kozlowski fifth and Ryan Blaney who had to make that late pit stop with three laps to go ends up one lap down in 19th today much more to come from Auto Club Speedway after this.